So today we're building the XY idler assembly. Here we've got the two idler brackets. One of them's already got a nut in, and you know how to put the nuts in by now. Most of the time they should just press in. There we go, easy peasy, pressed in. Then you can take two of the GT2 20 tooth, or 16 tooth, sorry, idlers. These come with little bearings in them. So you should be able to see there, that tiny bearing in the end. That just allows a nice free rotation. Don't do it too tight, just tight enough. Make sure everything spins freely. And let's get on with the other one. The screw length here is the 35 millimeters. Well, for this particular revision it is. If the bill of material says differently, then you should do differently. Excellent. So that's those two idlers made. They're not mirror images, so one will go one way up and one will go the other way up. But I mean, the screws, you know, no big deal. They screw into the frame with standard M5 screws. So let's do that now. So here we are looking at the frame. This is the end of the y-axis area. And it mounts on like that. You should already have two bearings seated. I don't mean bearings. You know, these things. The T-slot nuts. You should already have two of those in the frame. If you don't, then as always, use the post-fit T-slot nuts and they will do just fine. Screw these into the frame willy-nilly and before long you'll be happy as Larry. So the to get the right height position you want to line it up with the part that's already there. So that little bracket, just line up with that. This point here, this gap here should be about two and a half millimeters. So, I mean, is this a two and a half mil Allen key? This is a three mil Allen key. I think this is two and a half mil Allen key. It is. So if you have a two and a half mil Allen key, a good thing to do might be just to put it in that gap against the flats and then tighten it down. Maybe lay it down. There you go. Easy peasy. Again, not too tight, but tight enough. This back edge should be just flush. There you go. That now slips out. And we have a nice two and a half mil gap that's just the size of the Allen key. It can move up and down a bit. There's a little bit of slot there. And you can obviously move it quite easily after the belts are in. And the belts we will do in just a minute. So now we have all our pulleys in place, the X and Y, we need to make sure we got this in the right place and uh, get our belts on. So let's find some belts. Okay, so now we're ready to fit a belt. This is approximately the right length, but you can just put a five meter belt on or whatever and cut off the excess. So we're gonna start with the uh, pulley, just so we know what height we're running at. So this is the uh, top height, as it were, of the two levels. So we go down from here, well, along from here, whatever way you're doing it. And first of all, we go through this hole here. Down through the idler. Again, top level of the idler. To the other idler. Other idler, idler, idler. And then on this one here. And it comes out on the top like that. 
and then we take the other end of the belt and that goes through that pulley and that should then hold around the stepper motor and then we fix them to the carriage to fix the belt to the carriage we're just going to be loosening off a couple of these screws Should give us enough room to poke the belt in the edge there. And for this side, we only need it to sort of just come through. A couple of clicks, that'll be enough. For now, we don't need it tight, so just like that is fine. And then repeat on the other side. Loosen off the screws. And poke the belt through. This time, Poking the belt through, go as far as you can. The belt should be able to come through this gap here. Hold it with the finger and just sort of pull it until it's tight-ish. You know, you should have a bit of length here, not too much. Now we want the other belt. Uh, you want to run it sort of the same, but the opposite way. So starting wherever you like really. I like to start on the uh, XY joiner parts just because that sort of determines the level which you're at. But it should be obvious now there's only one path for it to take. To the XY joiner and join the end up. As before, with this side, you want it just a couple of clicks through. Those belts just coming a couple of clicks through there. And then that side you can tighten down. Again, not too tight, just tight enough. And that will basically stop those belts pulling out that side. That side's now solid. So we can push this one tight, pull this one tight. Get this side sorted. So this bottom front we sort of pull through nicely and that's nice and tight. So now we can just loosen the top one and the little one, the middle one a little bit to try and pull through the other belt until the top down view looks perpendicular. Pulling one belt will pull it all one way and the other one will pull it the other way. So a balance of the two and you'll be there. Now you've got the belt on, you can probably see that this motor is not aligned correctly, which is fine. We never aligned it properly to begin with. So you should be able to just loosen off the screws. Slide it up into that correct position. You should find as you move the belt that it's doesn't touch the XY joiner or sort of anything not straight. It should be pretty simple. And then obviously tighten it up once you're done. What you want to be looking for when you do this is making sure that as this end hits, like this, that the other end also hits at the same time. Mine might be a little bit off, but essentially what you want to be happening is that as the carriage comes to the end, both ends contact at the same time. Because if they don't, then it means that all your prints are going to come off slightly diagonal and to do that you can just pull one belt slightly tighter and it will make that offset. They don't need to be outrageously tight, it's just not necessary. 
but I think that will be good enough. As you can see, now that those belts are on, it moves a lot nicer. I mean, it's not super like easy to push because the steppers are linked in, so you're driving both stepper motors as you do it. But it doesn't jam because it's moving, well, in the correct direction without twisting. So that's it for the XY idlers. In the next episode, we're going to be taking the lead screws with steppers and all that stuff and get some of the Z-axis sorted because obviously you don't have much of a printer if you've only got two axes. Well, you have a printer. You don't have a 3D printer. So we're going to add that Z-axis and once we've got the Z-axis, we'll get in that heated bed, plate, glass, and then we're ready for a test print.